Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now as you can see I've got here two different machines from my the 1900 Pro and 495 Pro and although they look different because they actually are but basically they are the same machine inside. So with no further ado let's take a look at it. Hope that you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in a few seconds. And we are back. So starting with the unboxing experience, as always, as you guys can see on screen there, the a few images on the ATV 495 Pro and um, as usual it's a pretty regular unboxing and then some images on the ATV 1900 Pro so that you guys can take a look at the accessories and there will be a list on your left side of the screen with all the accessories that these uh, two machines come with. Now looking closer at these two devices because the design and ports will be the main difference between them and starting with the ATV 495 Pro uh, as you guys can see it's a lot smaller than uh, the 1900 and of course it has less ports as you guys can see there on screen. Now the ATV uh, 1900 Pro is bigger it has two external antennas and we will see if those external antennas uh, will make any difference or not but basically both look nice in my opinion of course but it will be uh, as always in terms of design a question of uh, personal taste and of course if we need more ports or less on the machine that we are looking for. Now moving to the specifications of these two devices, as I said on the intro, they are basically the same machine inside. So uh, in terms of main features, they are running the AM Logic S905, 2GB uh, of RAM and 16GB of flash storage and firmware is also the same on the two machines. Now I did update uh, this device because I found a few issues that I'll show with you in a few moments uh, and that was one of the ways that I did discover the the firmware is exactly the same. Even on the benchmarks they behave uh, almost exactly the same and the information that we have is that we are running the uh, 495 Pro on both machines. So even when we use the 1900 Pro, the name on the benchmarks and on the results will be 495. So they are sharing everything including the firmware. Now moving to the launcher, as you guys can see on screen as well, uh, they share exactly the same launcher, um, which is to be expected if they are the same machine and with the same firmware they have the same launcher. Now I always install third party launchers on any box and that's what I did. I'm using at this moment the Zen UI launcher just in case any of you guys want to know which launcher I did install, uh, but I like to keep things really simple and clean in terms of launch. Now moving to the remote control guys, it is really awesome to see MyGeek including a wireless remote. Now usually Android uh, TV boxes manufacturer they include a infrared remote control like this one that I've got right over here that the experience is not good so I'm always always suggesting uh, users to get a wireless remote control even if uh, those cheap wireless remote controls and I'll post a link right over here just in case you want to check that out with a comparison regarding uh, remote controls but in this particular case my Jeek includes a wireless one which works great uh, it has a key uh, um, a full keyboard on the back which might be useful if any of you uh, want to do some search uh, and it has the air mouse capability which is great if we want to browse uh, the web or even browsing our apps it's much quicker uh, than using any infrared remote control so congratulations here on my chica by including a wireless remote uh, with their machines now moving to the benchmarks as always I did install the same apps on both machines and one of the things that I did change was the wallpaper so I didn't get uh, too confused testing the two machines at the same time and as you guys can see and I'll post on screen the results for the ATV 495 Pro and I'll give a few seconds so that you guys can see and if you need a little bit more time you just pause the screen and you can uh, take a look or a closer look for yourself. 
Now moving to the 1900 Pro and I'll give you a few seconds as well so that you guys can see on screen the results, uh, the usual results in terms of benchmarks and once again if you need a few more seconds just pause the video and you can check it out. Now what I want to accomplish with this comparison here is two points, one of which is the Wi-Fi speeds. Uh, we will get much uh, higher speeds on the 1900 Pro uh, because of those two external antennas and also one thing that I did notice is that the flash storage on the 1900 Pro is faster than the 495 and this is actually something that we notice a lot on any box and this is not an exception uh, because the 1900 Pro opens apps a lot quicker and moves a lot quicker than the 495 Pro. So these are the main differences, design and then uh, the Wi-Fi speeds because of the external antennas and the flash storage is quicker on the 1900 Pro. Now moving to the video playback, I've got some mixed feelings right over here or mixed results to be more precise and starting with the YouTube, uh, as expected, we can play up to 1080 uh, with a really smooth playback, I must say, uh, so pretty happy with these results. Netflix, although these machines have DRM level 1, we can only play up to 480 or SD quality, so hopefully in the future my Jika gets a license from um, Netflix. Now regarding my yes, SPTV app it works just flawless so no issues at all and then when we move to Kodi uh, it came with version 16 if we update the firmware as I did uh, it goes to Kodi 17 and I did find a few issues uh, while playing some videos on, over Kodi uh, to be more precise regarding the 10-bit 4K H.265 the experience was not good at all as you guys can see uh, there on screen uh, not smooth a bit jerky and so on 8-bit 4K H.265 was not smooth as well so 10-bit and 8-bit uh, with the H.265 codec seems that needs to be fixed and also some 8-bit 4K H.264 so if we take a look at this um, most of the 4K files will fail to play smoothly some will play, uh, will play sorry, uh, correctly but most of them will uh, fail to play now when we go to 1080 um, the firmware uh, is okay and will play everything. H.264 and H.265 will play just fine, but uh, in my opinion, of course, the firmware needs to be fixed so that we can uh, take advantage of the hardware that these two machines have uh, to play up to 4K, which at this moment, some of the files will play uh, great and some of the files won't. So just a word of caution <laughs> right over here, uh, just in case some of you guys want to play up to 4K H.265 codec, especially 10-bit or 8-bit videos, um, the experience is not great at this moment. Now in terms of gaming, as expected, um, these machines will play anything that's available on the uh, Google Play Store in terms of Android gaming and as you can see on screen, playing Responables and Asphalt 8 Aeron, which are two of my uh, favorite games and they play just flawless. They, there are no issues at all as expected with the AM Logic S uh, 905. And then moving ahead to um, the game stream capability, uh, these two machines behave really well playing uh, PC games through the Android TV box as I explained on several videos that I've made on the past. But as you can see uh, some images there of gas guzzlers and the delay or lag, uh, it is minimal. We can play really smooth uh, up to 1080 resolution, 60 frames per second with incredible results. So, um, as expected, they, they, uh, I, I have to be fair, I was expecting these two machines to behave really well and they do in most things. Uh, the only thing that didn't work so well was the video playback in Kodi, which hopefully uh, uh, my Jika will uh, fix that issue. And now moving to our last test, which is the AirPlay capability, playing from our phone, our tablet, our computer and so on to the um, to the box itself, which in this particular case are the MyJika boxes. Usually I do install the AirPin Pro app, which is the uh, my favorite app, but MyJika comes with a pre-installed app that works great, by the way. And as you can see on screen, playing live slideshows with high bitrate files uh, over the network, we can um, stream really well both audio and image so a great experience here uh, this is actually something that we use a lot here at home and I'm always testing with any machine that comes to the channel 
and I did play it with uh, magazine style sliding panels and vintage prints uh, slideshows which the last one is really really heavy but behaves great and that is it hopefully this video will help you to decide if this is a machine for you or not as always my name is Roberto George and I'll see you on the next one